Hi everyone, welcome back to Job One for All. Continuing our topics about threads, we are going to talk about synchronism. Well, I think there is no better example than the account example uh, when we are using synchronism. So let's imagine that we have a account. Let's create here a package, uh, remove test and call it domain. And then create a Java class, let's call it account. Okay, inside account, we are going to create only one attribute. Uh, let's call this attribute balance. Let's give the value integer just so we can focus in the problem. So let's say that we have balance and the value is uh, 50. Now we are going to create one getter to get the balance. And I'm going to create here another method, void, uh, that will withdraw. and we will withdraw a amount so pretty straightforward this dot balance uh, minus equal or if you're not familiar yet you should be it's like this dot balance minus uh, amount okay so very simple account class now we are going to create here a new java class Let's give the name as account, mm, no, thread account test 01. And this will be a runnable. And then implement the run method. So the first thing is I want to create a attribute to represent the account. So private account, account, new account. So I have one object representing the account and I have the run method here and I will also create my main method. Okay, so before we go and write some code inside a run, let's imagine that we have the, the following. Uh, the business logic to, to withdraw uh, some money will be part of the, the method here. So we are going to call private void and we are going to give the same name, withdraw with amount but here I'm going to do the business logic so what's the business logic I cannot withdraw money if I don't have money the account cannot be negative so if the account this object dot get balance is uh, greater or equals the amount because I can reach zero and then I'm going to give here south um, well we can do the following let's create a method here private string get thread name and I'm just going to return thread dot current thread dot get name because then I can just reuse this get thread name here so this thread uh, is going to with draw money and then we have the act of withdrawing so account dot withdraw and then the amount we are getting as argument and then I'm going to copy this one so this thread finished with draw win not sure if it's like this look like that is uh, current balance then uh, count dot get balance and then if the balance is lower than the amount it means that I cannot withdraw money so south no or not enough balance for and then get red name with draw money. Very simple business logic. Every time I'm trying to withdraw some money, I'm checking if I actually have a balance. And now the Brum method is the one that represents like two people accessing the same uh, account. So here we are going to do the following. We're going to create for i 
up to five. And here is where the business logic is uh, for like withdrawal will happen. Everybody that's going to withdraw money will withdraw 10 per time. So if it's just one person, we are going to withdraw 50, exactly the balance we have inside our account. And then just to be sure, uh, if at some point in time the account that we declared right here, the object that we have, not get balance is lower than zero, then I'm going to print a message, something very, 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 very wrong happened. Because imagine, if this is actually a software for a bank, uh, yeah, it will have a big problem because if someone was able to get below zero, someone will have to pay for that. Now, that we have the run, I have the business logic to withdraw. I'm going to create here a object, trade account test, because this is the runnable. And inside this, I will have one account. And then I will tell, uh, here we'll create two threads. T1, uh, let's pass here the runnable, try the account test 01, and then I will give a name, more references, STR, and then T2, Leru Cranero. Cool. T1.start, T2.start. Now, let me go back here and show what's going to happen. We have E1 and we have E2. They represent like two people, like two workers, two threads accessing the same resource. What's the same resource? Is the account. So this is the account object and the account object has a balance inside. The balance is 50. But we have two people accessing the same time or maybe in almost at the same time, the same object. So what's going to happen here? Let's see. Control Shift F10. And boom, something very, 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 very wrong happened. And this is expected because we have like two threads accessing the same object and there is no synchronism between them. Let's see what happened. Uh, as you can see, basically both of them are going to withdraw money and everything works uh, perfectly fine. Uh, you can see that there is a difference from when we actually print something in the console and uh, when the action actually happens. But I'm interested in this uh, part right here. So basically, at this part here, the Hestia finished with the drawing. So the current balance after she finished is 10. And then the second thread the T2, the bell kernel uh, thread, is going to withdraw money. So at this point, they are starting this method. And, well, maybe the this thread got to this point. Well, because we still have 10. But then before it actually reaches the account of withdrawal, it just stops. And then the scheduler makes the, the thread give the, the processing time to another one. And that's what, what actually happens. Hestia is now going to withdraw money. And then Hestia also got to this point. So Hestia is going to withdraw 10. Beru is going to withdraw 10. The amount that we have available is 10. So at some point we are going to get negative. But that happened exactly because before you actually executed the the withdraw, the other thread got to the turn. And to avoid these kind of problems, we have to synchronize. And when you have these kind of problems, when you have multiple threads trying to access the same object, you have to synchronize and say, hey, until I finish my work here, eh, nobody will actually go and pick up the, the process. So you're going to see that's kind of a flag, but basically, it doesn't mean that, uh, for example, if uh, Hestia starts and we synchronize, it's not like uh, Hestia saying, okay, nobody uh, now will move. No, what happens is this object, this part here will be blocked. And even if Hestia is not doing anything, nobody will be able to access until Hestia uh, finishes her work.
but we are going to talk about the, the details about this in the next video so i hope you enjoyed see you there bye